בעזרת השם נעשה ונצליח, והשם עלינו ברחמיו ירוויח, השיעור יהיה לעילוי נשמת אסתר קדן בת קטפיה ולרפואת מנשה נג'י בן חר. אוקיי, מצוות עשה. It's a positive command from the Torah that the Kohanim should place the Jewish people in the name of the Almighty. Where is the source for it? How many Kohanim we have? One, two, only two Kohanim today. Okay. Ken Yerbu. So let's see if the blessing of the Kohanim, if we know all the law. Where is the source for it? Kohanim. In a book of Vaikra, Sefer Vaikra, and in Sefer Bamidbar. Two sources there is to it. And I'm going to bring the two sources. The first source comes in Humash Vaikra, in Parashat Shmini. In chapter 9, verse 22, it says like this Vaisa Aaron et Yada Velaam Vaivarchem. And Aaron raised his hand and blessed the children of Israel. Rashi HaKadosh say that blessing referring to Birkat Kohanim. In Sefer Bamidbar, in Parashat Naso, in chapter 6, verse 23, it say like this, Daber el Aaron ve'el banav le'emor, ko tevarchu et b'nei Yisrael. What does it mean? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu tell Moshe Rabbeinu to tell Aharon HaKohen and his children, okay? That's the blessing that you should bless the children of Israel. In verses 24, 25, and 26, there it says, and now I'm going to reach to it. So we see from here that the blessing of Birkat Kohanim, it's a Hiyuv Deoraita. It's from the Torah. Okay? And the main source for it actually on Humash Bamidbar. Because David said specifically, and he explained, and the text is, Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yichuneka. Isa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom. Okay? Everyone happy? Question? No. Okay. Now become, who's obligation? Who's obligated? So Birkat Kohanim, it's a mitzvat aseh from the Deoraita, even today in our days, that Bet HaMikdash not exist, as you all know. Okay, and that mitzvah, it's obligated mainly for the offspring of Aaron HaKohen. That means all the descendants of Aaron. And here come the bat. In Sefer Haredim, listen what he said. And that will help you, Rabotai, that will help you when you hear Birkat Kohanim to focus. Listen what Sefer Haredim said. Sefer Haredim been written by Rabbi Elazar Askari. Rabbi Elazar Askari, born in the 16th century in Tzfat, in the city of Tzfat in Israel, that he born around 486 years ago. And he wrote Sefer Haredim. What is Sefer Haredim? Sefer Haredim, he explained the mitzvot of the Torah according to the organs of the body. The nose, the mouth. When he speak about the mouth, he speak about mainly Lashon Hara. Ears, not listening. You know what I'm saying? Eyes, not to watch things that we're not allowed to, and etc. You know what I'm saying? And there he said like this. Listen to what he said. I'm going to read it in Hebrew and I translate it to English. שלא רק הכהנים מקיימים מצוות עשה מן התורה בשעה שמברכים את ישראל. That means not only the כהנים fulfill the mitzvah of blessing the Jewish people while they're saying ברכת כהנים. Listen. גם ישראל, those that not כהנים, that amounts the audience, שעומדים מול הכהנים, that stand in the front of the כהנים, we'll get to that halacha just now, בשתיקה, what does it mean בשתיקה? silently, not speaking during ברכת כהנים, וכוונה, that understanding what each verse that the כהן say, 
ועונים אמן, and answering אמן in the end of each verse, okay, שותפים, they become partners. רבותיי, listen to that, become partners, שותפים בקיום מצוות התורה של ברכת כהנים. They become partners for fulfilling the mitzvah of ברכת כהנים. Who doesn't want to become a partner blessing the Jewish people? Rabotai, you're not jumping, so I'm a bit disappointed. Birkat Kohanim. Everyone think when the Kohen stand, he bless, you can be a partner with him. If you just focus, stand quietly in front of him and understand every word that he said. And answer a man in the end of each brocha. Yes, bro. In the unlikely event of you just got a minion. I'll get to it. 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 How does it work? I'll get to it. You got a minion with one. I know. There's no others. And there's no others. No others. I understand. I understand. So I didn't wrote it in my law, but I read it in the Benish High. The Benish High speak about it. I just read it two days ago. Funny enough. Good that you ask. You say everything from Shemaim. Obviously, in Shemaim, they knew that Paul going to ask me that question. I didn't prepare for it. So we see from here that the obligation is on the offspring of Aharon Kohen, all the Kohanim that come from the senses of the Kohanim, and originally from where? From Aharon Kohen. Okay? They obligate to Sebir Kat Kohen. Okay, that's understand. But why Dafka? We have to understand why Dafka did Akadosh Baruch Hu chosen the Kohanim. Why did he chose them and not any other one else to do Birkat Kohanim? We have to understand. I'm going to bring three different opinions to help us, and I brought very special different opinion. I started with the great eagle. The great eagle, Hanesher Agadol. Arambam, the Maimonite. The Maimonite that I'm speaking, it's Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman. He born in the city of Cordova. Cordova is in Spain. He born around 884 years ago. And he wrote the Sefer More Nevuchim. Everyone heard about it. More Nevuchim is a book, it's a philosophical book, and a book of Emunah. But you have to understand it. Because the beginning, most of the sages didn't agree, and they wanted to put the book. They wanted actually to destroy that book. It's a very deep book, but you have to understand it. And there he said, Hele Gimel. Hele Gimel is part three. In chapter 42, listen what he said. That's the Rambam. Birkat Kohanim anu zuchim le'avin שמקור כל החיים והברכה בעולם נובע מהקדוש ברוך הוא. When you listen to ברכת כהנים that the Kohen say, you start to understand that everything that we have in this world and whatever coming to us in this world is all from the Almighty. Not only that, it's implanted in us the Emunah in the Almighty. Yevarechecha. Let's start with the first brocha. Yevarechecha. Who's going to bless you? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yevarecha Hashem. Who's going to protect you? HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's immediately plant on you to understand where everything comes from. And plant inside your mind the Emunah and the Almighty. Do you understand what is Birkat Kohanim? People want to say, how can I be strong in Amuna? Focus on Birkat Kohanim. That's the Rambam. Not only that, I'm going to bring another source why Dafka that. Sefer HaChinuch. Everyone hear about Sefer HaChinuch, I'm sure. That Sefer HaChinuch been written by Rabbi Aharon Alevi. Rabbi Aharon Alevi, born in the city of Garondi in Spain. He born around 784 years ago. Around. And he explained that the main reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose the Kohanim to say the Birkat Kohanim, to bless the Jewish people, it's because the Kohanim number one being chosen to serve in Bet HaMikdash, we all know. 
Not only that, because they've been chosen to serve in Beit HaMikdash, they have a closer relationship to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And they have the fear of heaven from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. In that case, that they're closer to the Almighty, because they serve in Beit HaMikdash. Not only that, they have the fear of heaven, that they're working in a holy place, they can bless us. So that's the second reason. The third reason that I'm bringing, there's many more, but I've decided to bring two, three, and they're very wide, you see now. The third one is come from Sefer Likutei Torah. Sefer Likutei Torah, you're not going to believe, been written by Rabbi Shneor Zalman Miladi. Rabbi Shneor Zalman Miladi, born around 274 years ago in a city in, a, in Belarus. You know who was Rabbi Shneor Zalman Miladi? He started the Chabad movement. Everyone here, Chabad, Chabad? Rabbi Shneor Zalman Miladi, he started it. He was the first Rebbe. And in his book, Likutei Torah, on Parashat Korah, he explained like this. Listen to what he said. because she ha-kohanim eman she chesed. The kohanim, they are made of kindness, compassion. Vehem yecholim limshoch ha-or ve-ashefa. They can draw down, to bring down the light and the prosperity from heaven. But that's not the end. Listen what he said. eloki elaam. They can bring all of that prosperity and all the light and all the brocha up from heaven down to earth. Listen to how he finished. Vegam lemi shelo megia. Even those that not deserve to receive that prosperity, that they are shaim. While the Kohanim blessing, Sarah Vishneor Zalman Miladi, they can receive that blessing. So, what does it say here? Sarah Vishneor Zalman Miladi, like this. That the Kohanim have the power to bring down that prosperity even to those that not deserve. Not only to those that deserve, that's obviously, but to bless those that not deserve. Now you understand why the Kohanim been chosen. Any question? I believe that when you are also close to Hashem in your prayers and you have a relationship, you become a partner with Him in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what's the question? No, that's why I just realized now. So, the que so uh, uh, if I understand your question, you say that everyone can become close to Hashem. Nahor. But why people go to a great tzaddik when they want a blessing? Because they connect it more. And I'll give you an analogy to understand. When you want to go to somewhere, you want to have a protection. You know, you call it vitamin P in, uh, in, in Israel, protectia. Everyone understand what is protectia? Yeah. You want to go, let's say, to the post office. Who are you going to speak? Someone that's close there, that's close to them. Listen, I need my license, I need that, can you help me? You go close. The tzaddik, lehavdi, lehavdi, a thousand times, all day he's connected to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He's bond with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When you go ask him for his blessing, it's penetrating faster than anyone else. The same lack that guy that work in a post office or the guy that work in a court. Am I right? When you want to push some case, you go to someone close. Pashut. It's anywhere in the world. You know that? He'll help you. So who are we going? We're going to the Kohanim. They're closer to the Almighty. Because they're closer to the Almighty and they're bond with the Almighty, they can bring that prosperity quicker and much better. You follow? Okay. I would like, before I go, some question. Yes. Yes, Stephen. Huh? Akonia, Akonia. Ah, you, did you hear what he said? He heard that. that you, you've been at the Chabad too much. Am I right? 
Too much, too much. Because, I'll tell you why the Chabad. Because it's not only the Chabad, all the Hasidim, not only Hasidut Chabad, also the Sephardim, that they go according to Ariya Kadosh and they believe a bit on Kabbalistic. Not they believe, everyone believes in Kabbalistic. But they're more involved with that. The Zohar explained that when the Mashiach come, the Leviim going to become the Kohanim. They're going to serve in Beit HaMikdash. So because you're a Levi, you want to serve there, huh? Don't forget me, I'm also a Levi. <laughs> yes, yes, huh? I got protection now. Okay. <laughs> I got the lady, so I don't need it. <laughs> Baruch Hashem. Okay, so we understand so far. Any question before I'm going to move to the law? So what before, will happen to the Kohanim in that case? They're going to still serve in Beit Amigdan, but the Levine is going to help them. Now ask me why. <laughs> why do you need the Levine? Anyway, the Levine served there. Because the Levine... Kohanim ba'avodatam, ve'leviim ve'shiram. That's am I right? The leviim usually used to sing, used to help. But now they're going to help the Kohanim. They're going to serve there. Why? Because Eretz Israel going to be so big that it's going to spread all over the world. So the Kohanim can't do all the job by himself. I know that you Kohen, you worried. I promise you I'm not going to take your job. I'm going to be a partner to you. Maybe, maybe it will be the... Sorry, the, sorry? Maybe it will be the baby who can't sing. I don't have a voice to sing, believe me. If you hear me singing, I'll get tomatoes. Yes. You also a Levi. Oh, oh. Look how many Levi. Oh, another Levi. I'm fully surrounded here by Levi. We'll wash the run. We'll wash them from the head down. And we wash them from the head down. Right, I'll but get to it so about where, the washing. Where does it come from that the Levine have to wash them the Kohanim's hands? It's a minhag that, that was in the olden days. They constitute that. Sorry? It's a minhag because in Bet Amigdash, who used to do it? Sorry? Who used to serve the Kohanim at Bet Amigdash? That's it, yeah. So that's, that's it. They wash their hands in the Bet Amigdash? Yeah. To help them, yeah. Water, and that's that's it, to help them, yeah. Now, before I start with the law, I have to answer our friend Paul. Nahon, you ask if all of them Kohanim. So if all of them Kohanim, you have to bless someone. It can't be that suddenly all the ten Kohanim on top there. <laughs> so who are they going to bless? <laughs> Some of the Kohanim have to be done. Okay. So let's start with the law. The blessing of the Kohanim have to say in one language, in Lashon HaKodesh, in Hebrew. It cannot say in any other language. And the Kohanim, when they say Birkat Kohanim, they have to say it loudly. Do you hear me, Anthony? I love to hear your voice when you say it. Okay. The Birkat Kohanim, the Kohanim have to say it while they're standing up. <coughs> the question becomes, is us, that we get blessed by the Kohanim, should stand up? Minadin, we don't obligate it. But today, Hazal, Pasken, and everyone, we should show covered. We're all standing up while the Kohanim bless us. Okay? The Mishnah Brura Pasken like this. Listen to that. In Siman, it's chapter 128. Kuf, Kaf, Het, Saif, Kaf, Aleph. That means chapter 128, verse 21 that a Kohen that is a handicap and can't stand by himself, not allowed to go up to bless the Jewish people. And you'll see that that's not the end. Yes? Is it a permanent handicap or is it like, like a broken leg, temporarily handicapped? If, if he have a broken leg and he can't stand by himself, he still can't go until he can stand by himself. Tzitz Eliezer. Everyone heard about Shut Tzitz Eliezer? No. I'll explain to you. Tzitz Eliezer was a Rabbi Eliezer Yehuda Vandenberg. He born in Jerusalem around 103 years ago. And he said that the person that is sick, or is an old man, and the Kohanim do Birkat Kohanim, and it's really difficult for him to stand because he's sick, or he's an old man, and it's difficult. He can sit while the Kohanim blessing the Jewish people. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because usually everyone stand up. He can't, he can't. Now we're going to get to Birkat Kohanim. Birkat Kohanim have to be said with the is a minion, even with the Kohanim. If the Kohen or the Kohanim is ten, include them, that's when they say. That is one mistake that many people make a mistake. And the Shulchan Aruch Pasken and the Mishnah Bura also Pasken. That many people think that Birkat Kohanim have to be said where there is a Sefer Torah. Not necessary. No. There is a minion, it's enough to say Birkat Kohanim. That's how the Shulchan Aruch Pasken, number one, that should be a minion. The Mishnah Brura Pasken, that it can be, first of all, in Siman Kuf Kaf Het Sa'if Bet, that means verse 2, 128 verse 2. There it says it doesn't have to be a Sefer Torah. For example, there is a different minion. People got together, they come, and suddenly they realize that the first minion already started a half an hour ago. So they lost most of the davening. They decide, you know, there's ten of us, let's stand there and daven. In Eretz Israel, they can do Birkat Kohanim. I'll explain to you why I say Eretz Israel, I'll get to it. Now, we all know that the Kohanim take their shoes off. Nachon? Kohanim? Why do you take your shoes off? Huh? You, heard of that? you don't take your shoes off before you go to do a duchen. You never heard about it. You do it every time. Why? Why do you do that? Because? That's how they said it at the temple. Not at all. I knew that someone was going to say that. Not at all. What was that? Stephen, tell him. Stephen said... So Stephen said that the Kohanim, the Kohanim, while they was in Bet Amikdash, they used to serve bare feet. All the service, not only the blessing. So many people intend to think that that's the reason. So it's not. Our Hazar constitute for us to take the shoes before. Because in the olden days, they used to have shoes, or mainly sandals, with the straps. And Hazal say, if suddenly one of the Kohanim, the straps get broken, and he's going to be busy fixing up his straps, he might going to lose Birkat Kohanim. And the congregation will say, you see, he didn't go up to say Birkat Kohanim because he's a Pasu. For some reason, they'll have a doubt that he's, he can't say Birkat Kohanim, and it's going to be Motsi Shemra. So Hazal Pasken, no matter, no matter what you're wearing, if it's a sandal, if it's a shoes, Whatever is it, you'll take your shoes before you go up to say Birkat Kohanim. And it's not because what the Kohanim used to serve in Bet Amikdash Yes? No, I was just thinking because they partner with Hashem, it's holy ground, they must take the shoes. <laughs> no, no, it. that's the difference. You see, the difference is between us and the Muslim. When the Muslim go out today, wherever they pray, I don't want to mention it, they take the shoes. No, we walk with shoes to our shoe. What? The burning bush. I don't know what they do in. Shal Rachel na alecha me al raglech. I don't know what they do. That was to Moshe. But Moshe wasn't a Kohen. He was a Levi, and from him. By the way, Moshe was the first, the first Kohen Gadol because he passed it. But no, that's the main reason. So we know now why the Kohanim take your shoes. Now, another thing, and that's very important. When the Shliach Tzibur, the Shliach Tzibur, the guy that Daven, reached to Retzeh, Tfilat Retzeh, that when the Perek of the Avodah and the Tfilah start, the Kohanim should start standing up, moving awards, Duchanim. Ado, the Shulchan Aruch Pasken, that even if you reach to the end of the brocha, the Shliach Tzibur reach to the end of the brocha of Retzeh, you still can go start moving towards the Duchan. That's how Bim Pasken again from the Mishnah Bura 128. Remember. 
where is the source that the Kohanim should stand up and start preparing themselves earlier to go to Duchen? The source to it come from the Gemara Masechet Sota in page 38, folio 2. Lamet Het Amud Bet, Masechet Sota. Gemara Masechet Sota. Okay. You ask me about Netilat Yadayim. The Levim should vas the hand or should make sure that the hand is vast and clean, that they didn't touch any part of inside of the body, that sweat, before they vast the hand of the Kohanim. In a time of Birkat Kohanim, the Kohanim have to make sure that when they're blessing the Jewish people, that their hand is on the level of their shoulder, not higher. Not only that, that the right hand should be a little bit higher than the left. Why? I explained that. That the right hand referring to Hesed, to character trait of Hesed, when the left is the knee. The knee is judgment. So we want to make sure that the Hesed is above the judgment. And that's what the Kohanim should do. Any other question before I continue? A Kohen? Yes. Wait, I'll wait, I'll get to it, I'll get it, I'll get it. That, okay, I'll get to that also. So we have two questions to answer. Kohen, listen to that. Kohen that his hand shaking and he cannot keep his hand up. All the blessing, not allowed to go up to bless the Jewish people. Not many people know that. When the Kohanim blessed the Jewish people, the, when the Kohanim blessed the Jewish people, the Jewish people should stand in the front of them, in the front of the Kohanim, and must not look at the Kohanim. They should close their eyes. Listen to me again. Close their eyes. Not good to look at the Kohanim. Why? Because all the prosperity, all the brocha come through the hand. And when you look at it, you see the holiness. And that can cause a person to lose his good eyesight. Not many people know those halachot. I chose specially halachot that not many people know. Okay, in Eretz Israel, every day during the week, they say Birkat Kohanim. If there is a Musaf, like Rosh Chodesh, they also say, on Shabbat and Musaf, they say. The difference is, in the diaspora, we say only on Yom Tov. After each bracha in Eretz Israel, a person should focus and say Amen. In the diaspora, while the Shliach Tzibur say the Birkat Kohanim, because there is no Kohanim Duchanim, you know what you should say? Ken yehi ratzon. Not amen ken yehi ratzon. Ken yehi ratzon. Many people make the mistake and say amen ken yehi ratzon. No, 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 no. Ken yehi ratzon. I answer you, okay? Stephen, now there is a mahloket, funny enough, I saw that also, the Benish High bring. Should people split their hand because some people can't, they can. Should they do that or not? Some people can't. There is no problem. As long that it's open, so the brocha will spread, will come out. You understand? And not going to be closed. Because when you close, you're not, you're not spreading the brocha. So we see from here the most important. Yes, I, Ivanovich, Mazel Tov. You know, he deserved Mazel Tov. His son getting married. No, please God, Mazal Tov, may they build Bait Neiman in Israel. That that usually usually the Shliach Tzibu. He called. He said the word, and they repeat. Oh, I didn't want to touch that. I didn't want to touch it, but you want to touch it, I'll touch it. For you, everything. No, you're just focusing. What it's mean, Yevarechecha? That HaKadosh Baruch Hu should bless you. But there is a secret behind it. Yevarechecha? 
you talking now, you, you want to be deep, you want to be deep. You want to become, become, become a Kabbalistic. Look, I'm not a Kabbalistic, but I'll help you. I don't know nothing about Kabbalah, but I understand what you're talking. Yevarechecha. What it mean, Yevarecha? The Almighty should bless you. Bless you with what? So, if you look, there's a lot. Bless you with money, with guilt, with prosperity, health, everything that you want. Vishmerecha. And he should protect you from who? No, 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 no. Also from those that walk on two. And the demon. You know, there is demon. Did you hear about demon? Lo aleinu. The evil spirit. But sometimes people don't understand. Suddenly, the machine at home break. Suddenly, this one break. And it cost you money. So when you say Hashem v'yishmerecha, that should protect your money, not only the money the physically that you have in your pocket, everything that you own, you understand? But this is for people like you in the Kabbalah. We're not on your level, you know, so let's go back to earth, if you don't mind. You know, I tried to get down. I, I, one day I'll get to you, okay? <laughs> so any question? That's basically... I know that there's many others, but most of them, you know, Kohen, obviously, if you drink, he's not allowed to go. We all know those halachot, the same like a person that drink. He can't stand up because there is a hashash that he's intoxicated, can't stand up and be a shliach tibu, he can't stand up and davening to a kadosh baruchu. The same, a Kohen not allowed to drink before he said the birkat kohanim and etc. And he did. Sorry. Simchat Simcha Torah, you definitely say. But where is it said that in Simchat Torah I should drink? It doesn't say anywhere. I don't see that. The only place that it says that you should drink, it's in Purim. Adeloyada. What it means, Adeloyada? The Rambam explained that you drink more than you get used to drink, that it put you to sleep. It doesn't mean that you completely papalas. You know, in Yiddish we say papalas, completely. <laughs> And I didn't hear anywhere, show me anywhere that it said that I should drink and get drunk on Simchat Torah. It doesn't say that. It said that you should be happy and you should eat meat, red meat, and Simcha Ela Bebasar Veyayim. What does it mean? That the real Simcha that you have when you eat red meat and drink wine. But I want to ask you, a person that can't eat red meat, I'm not a great red meat eater. I hardly can eat red meat. I prefer chicken or fish. So for me, it's more enjoyable to eat chicken. So I enjoy chicken. And if I enjoy a little bit of wine, and there's some people that if they drink wine, they get gout. So what, you force them to drink? You can't. It's just that it's speaking to those people to make you more happy on a festival, like on Shabbos. You follow? So by Ezrat Hashem, that all of this blessing that HaKadosh Baruch Hu written in his holy Torah, not only the blessing of the Birkat Kohanim, all the blessing that there is, we should all merit to receive them speedily in our day. And we see Mashiach Tzitkenu Bimera Be'amenu Amen Kaniratzon.